I'm not sure what is happening re the Okay. All right. So I think you'll be able to see now. Are we seeing the paper clearly? Are we hearing clearly? to run through the paper let me excuse the sounds from my tenants upstairs some birds All right, so let's go through the paper now. Okay. I started these two questions when I tried to do the live earlier. Hi, Cassandra. Sorry for being late. All right, so here now we have write an appropriate name for the IT professional who performs each of the following functions. So for I, this would be the duty of the database administrator while the repairs and malfunctioning computer te um, would be the technician. Alright, so here now we have 
to describe the function of each of the following units in a computer system so the here we have the control unit the ALU and the central processing unit so the CPU is the brain of the computer and it is used to um, carry out all the operations of the computer system um, assisted by the control unit and the arithmetic and logic unit so your CPU would basically be the housing which carries out all the functions of a computer system while your while your control unit is like your traffic police for data it is going to direct the flow of data inside of your computer system so it basically sends the data where it is supposed to go whenever an instruction is inserted into the computer system while your arithmetic and logic unit is used to carry out all um, logical and mathematical operations Cassandra, if you have any question, let me know. That's a blank page. Nothing is missing from that one. No. There was a diagram missing. Alright, so here now we have the convert each of the following data from the number system specified to its decimal equivalent not sure if anybody would try to work this out and tell me what it is or how it is that we get these answers so we have one two three four bits here um, for the four bits we're going to use the powers table as I would call it let me insert a table here. Oh, I can't insert a table. Which means that I'm going to have to draw. I'm going to have normally you would start from the right and move to the left but because I'm using the computer so it would be 2 to the power of 3 2 to the Two to the power of two to the power of two and we're counting down in this case two to the power of one and two to the power of zero. Alright, so this is our power table. So after you put this in now, you work out the information. Or you work out the powers here. So 2 to the power of, any number to the power of 0 will give you back 1. I should have used PowerPoint for this you know. Would have been easier for writing. Alright. I think probably for the next one I'll have to use the so this 
would work out to one. This one would work out to two. This one would work out to four. That's two times two. And four times two is eight. All right, so here now we're going to insert our binary numbers. And we multiply after so this now would be one that's zero oh, this is one also sorry then zero and one so we multiply so one one times eight is going to give you back eight So 1 times 8 is going to give you back 8, so it's 8 plus 4 plus 2 times 0, which is 0, plus 1. So this now is equal to 8 plus 4, 12, 12 and 1, 13 to the power of subscript 10 to say that this is a base 10 number. And that would have been your answer there. Hi, gameplay. Oh, this year I think is 2016. Do you have a... Hi, Duncan. Alright. Are we following? Okay, I'll try. <laughs> All right, um, Samuel. All right, so a to the nine power. So we're going. This now is base sixteen. So here now we would have to use the sixteen to the power of sixteen powers table. So it would be 16 to the power of 1, 16 to the power of 0. And you work these ones out. So, again, any number to the power of um, 0 will give you 1. So, this will work out to 16. This one would work out to 1. And then you insert. So, A in hexadecimal. As you know, the hexadecimal system is where the numbers 10 to 15 is represented by a letter. So you have um, A would be equal to 10, B would be equal to 11 until you reach F. So here now you would have 10 and 9. And you multiply. So it is 16 times 10, which is 160 plus 9 which is equal now to 169 base 10 okay then we have 25 base 8 which is the octal system numbering system let me copy this table down all right so here we would have 8 to the power of 1 and then 8 to the power of 0 so this would work out to 8 that would be 1 and then put in our value so this is 2 
and this is five. All right, so two eight sixteen. 16 plus 5, that now would be equal to 21, base 10. Everybody okay so fine? So far? Alright, here now we have binary coded decimal. The binary coded decimal um, system is where we have a specific code for um, the positive and also negative so each aspect of your numbering system would have a four bit code here now CXE decided not to insert that part so you're just supposed to convert the number here So this here, this part, which is 0, 0, 1, 1, is 3. And the next part is 0. So that would have been your answer. 3, 0. Base 10. And because there is no sign to the front which says that the number is negative, it's safe to assume that the number is a positive 1. Alright, moving on to question 3. Alright, moving on to question 3. A technician was checking a computer to see if it needed replacement parts. The state the specification for each component identity indicated in A to C. Alright, so let me insert text boxes so that we can write our response. Alright, so here now we're looking on the word size. Basically the word size is, is how many um, data that we can accept at a given point, not necessarily data. But in this case, now your answer would be 64 bit for this part. Your processor type is the name. So that's Intel Pentium 4. The speed of the processor now would be 3.6 GH Z gigahertz. Anybody have any question? Samuel, is the speed okay for you? Alright, here now, the type of RAM. Alright, so the type of RAM now here would be your SDRM, the memory capacity, 
sector. Come on. Alright, sector. Alright. Moving on. Alright, name one storage device that uses sec sectors and tracks to store data and programs. Um, typical would have been um, CDs, CDs use tracks, um, the floppy disk, well it's no longer used but the floppy disk and the CD, any optical device there would work. Next one, identify one device interface that is suitable for connecting internal storage devices. Um, so your IDE and your SCIS um, would work here for this part. So any cabling that you use to connect the drives to your board that is what you would use there so your ide cable right you would use those and also your um sata is mostly for your hard drive but it says one device interface so you could write the sata the sata um interface there for that one are we okay all right um all right moving on all right so it says where to read the scenario sorry right, so let's read the scenario you guys read and then let me catch up on the comments Okay. All right, so continuing. All right, so identify one example of data can that can be entered. Application reads data about the heat generated. So basically it's going to take the temperature that is in a reactor. So that would be the data that can be entered. The input device that is used to enter the data, a sensor. Thank you, DeAndre. You found the channel. Alright, identify one example of information that is output. What did it say about output? It says now user can determine whether the reactor is working efficiently in regulating the flow of water in the So it's basically going to tell you if the temperature is too high um for the reactor and a suitable output device would be an alarm or a speaker which is going to send off an alarm to tell the persons that all right something is not right here all right state whether the processing in this scenario is batch online real time all right so we can reason this part out because it would not be feasible for it to be batch you know these birds are the worst Alright, so batch processing is where data is collected in groups and processed at a specific time. Banking system normally uses batch. Online or real time means that it happened as whatever it is happens, then that is when the data is received. So in this case, no, it would be online or real time. Why? Because the sensor is constantly monitoring the temperature in the in the reactor so that once it is that the pressure goes above then a particular procedure is carried out to cool it back down all 
All right, state one other example of an automated information processing system. Um, uh, you call those now. The banking system uses an automated system, especially now with the um, the automated machines. Um, any manufacturing company, such as any brewery, like um, Pepsi, any company that does automotive in terms of car assembly, then that would be an example of automation. Once it is that persons are not there manually putting the parts together, then that would be automation. List three advantages of using an automated information processing system over corresponding mail manual system. Um, one, it's less time consuming. You, in terms of the work to be done. So, um, the automated system would move faster than a manual system. That is what I need to say. Um, next thing, your productivity level would be higher because as one of my students said, you don't have to give it any holiday, any weekends or paid for overtime to work. So you can set it and it is supposed to carry out whatever procedure. Hence, you get more done. Um, and it cuts down the cost of labor in your business. That's three. All right, read the following scenario. All right, so let's read. The BB company uses a computerized system for ordering items as follows. The data entry clerk enters the name of the items. All right, so this is chapter five in the Oxford Information Technology book. So the data clerk enters the name of the items required and the amount needed on a paper-based request form. Um, the data entry clerk then enters the data into the computer system. The administrator assistant re-enters the data from the form into the computer system. So that's two entry. The computer system outputs a report indicating if data entered by the data clerk and the is the same entered by the administrative assistant. The administrative assistant makes any corrections as necessary. The computer system then purchases produces a purchase request. Okay. So here now we're looking on validation and verification. Um what is validation? Validation is where we identify errors before processing. Um, verification is where we identify errors after processing. So it's validation, popular example would be like you filling out a form online. If you, the fields that would have the asterisk, if you don't fill those field out, fields out, you can't move on to the next page. Verification now is like you typing a letter and then you're checking for errors thereafter. So it's a name, the technical term for the original document in this scenario. So the original document is your source document. For those persons who do accounts, it's the same meaning. So it's where data is entered first or for the document by which we used to enter data into the computer. Um, we are to state whether the original document is machine readable or human readable. So currently it would be in human readable form because as we know machine codes are standard zeros and ones. So it would be human readable. Um, state the term used for re-entering the data into the system and explain why it is a useful method. Alright, so this is double data entry. It's a type of verification. Um, where, as it, it the name suggests, two persons enter the data and then it is compared to ensure that the data is 
if the two items are the same then it goes forward otherwise then as, as in the example somebody would have to check it and edit the data so explain why it is a useful method it is a useful method because it helps to identify errors and that's just it because on the other side it is very time consuming all right name the file organization structure most suitable to access and store the purchases requested um other than sequential any method that you give you just be able to justify um serial method would store it in the order it is received hence i would say that serial would be the best um, method for this one why as i would have said before this method stores the data in the order it was received hence you process this process the requisition based on when you get them so you don't want to have a system where you get a request last but it is processed first yeah i'm checking my other device hope you guys are still tuned in understanding what i'm saying if you have any questions let me know all right identify the storage device that is most suitable to store the data from the purchase request and justify your answer storage device this should actually be storage media all right so storage device you could say flash drive you could say hard drive um other than like your floppy disk which is outdated um any storage device that is given would be suitable it's just for you to justify your response in this case so once you're thinking about any secondary storage device you're thinking about the capacity so anyone that you're going to write you would have to speak to the size or the volume of data that it can hold also to the fact that it is portable like a flash drive so you write a flash drive you would write that it is portable it has quite a number of it can hold a vast number of um data and what else yeah it can be locked away for safekeeping also all right state one data check and explain how it can be used to confirm that the data entered is accurate um so we're looking now on the validation checks so in terms of accurate or accuracy you couldn't use presence check which is a type of validation because presence is just going to ensure that the data and something is written and i think we have all been guilty of that where we go online and we're supposed to type something and we just type shortcut because we just want to get it over and done with so that wouldn't be for accuracy a data type check could work for this one because you would specify the data or the type of data to be entered on the form hence um, the user would have to ensure that it matches that criteria and just like that we're finished with section one all right so let's look on this one productivity tool Alright, so for this one, it's not necessary that we need to read the entire data that's there. It says three formatting features used in the document. So, at the top there is a digital forensic that's in bold. Abstract is italized, so you write italics. Um, spiraling is underlined, so it would be bold, italized, italics, and underlined. number of paragraphs the number of paragraphs after each of the following tasks is performed so it's a paragraph two is moved below abstract as the new number one so let's look at that 
paragraph 2 this one is moved above right here all right so we still have two paragraphs paragraph 1 is copied and placed below paragraph 1 so we have two three paragraphs because if we move this and drag it here all these two will merge because it's not going to automatically give it this space but it would still look like a paragraph and then to copy it three paragraphs Alright, um, reason why the word spiraling is underlined by the software. Alright, SPI. Thank you, Hamid. Let me check in on you guys to ensure that you are over here okay all right so spiraling could be underlined because it is spelled incorrectly or the f there's a fragment probably there's a word missing from before um spiraling well based on my recollection that is how spiraling or Hold on, did it say by the computer or by the user? By the software. So it could be that the word is incorrectly spelled because sometimes we use the softwares and, well, it's not software, sorry, software. Um, and based on the language, US and British, it comes up with a error message. Um, so that part there all right using the search and replace option all occurrences of cyber are to be changed to cyber crime state the results after the change all right so cyber let's search for cyber as cyber crimes become so that's one Cyber crimes right there. Digital crimes. I'm only seeing one. You guys seeing any other one there? I'm seeing one. Let's check back the question. Alright, it says using the search and replace. All occurrences of cyber are to be changed to cyber crime. All right, so the result would be that right here, where we have cyber, it would read as cyber crimes crimes become more. Pervasive in today's society. <laughs> Sometimes you look at some words and it look weird. <laughs> Alright, so you probably get an X um, underlined there. So that would be the result. Cybercrime, cyber would turn to cybercrimes and then as such, the sentence would read as cybercrimes, crimes become more pervasive in today's society. Alright, so you just write back the sentence right there. Alright, consider the following table which consists a sample of items in a supermarket. Alright, so I'm going to tell you that this is database. So, let us go through data types now. Data types in database differs from the data type in Pascal. So in um, in database, we have short text, long text. So I can just write text because um, depending on the version of database that you're using, you won't get long and short. You have currency. You have um, hold on, number. You have date and time. 
you have memo but the common one text number currency date and time all right so let's do our data type here so item item in this case would be text and that you would write right here beside item I think it's a while since I wrote anything on it so let me write in those So this would be oh not data type this would be text all right that would be your data type so it's text cost now would be currency And barcode over here because it's a combination now it's alphanumeric then we stick to text same thing like for telephone number if you go into the exam tomorrow and you see telephone number with a dash in there declare it as text you hear me saying declare write that as text because the dash would now make it alphanumeric Alright, so state the field that can be used as primary key. Your primary key is your uni code. It will not repeat any at all. So in this case now, it would be your barcode. Uh, let me copy this. barcode a suitable size for the barcode field so in this case you just count the text all right so here i have what two four six two four six two four six so it's safe to say that the barcode can be six Six. All right. The result of a query that finds all the costs less than five dollars, and we know that a query is a question that we ask the database, um, expecting a particular result, and we don't write back the exact question. So once it is that you see a query question coming up, you look on the fields that they give you, look on the data that they want. So in this case, um. They want the result. Hold on. Did they give the table? Yeah. Alright, so we have six eight. So here now you would look on the fees. If they asked if they had asked you to write the query. So they want the item, so you'd have to put back the field name item cost. If they didn't say barcode, then barcode wouldn't be important. But because they want all the costs, which is equal to five, then the criteria would have been equal sign five dollars or five not the dollar sign but five um underneath underneath the heading cost so in this case it says find all the items that cost five dollars not greater than not less than but five dollars so this would be soda again remember to drop your email address I can send you some multiple choice. I'll try answering them before I send them to you. So I send you with the answers. All right, the field name and order of the sorted records in the table. So let's see what is sorted. All right. So let me see now. So item O G W S. I didn't think I know my alphabet. All right, so item is not sorted um let's look on I started questioning myself a little Kareem I can't tell if these are the simpler questions um um for 
Oh. Unless you want to suggest one of the harder papers that, well, the paper that you think is hard of that for, for us to go through, go through those questions. But nonetheless, let's see. All right. Um. So we have six and then eight, then four and then five. So that's not. All right. So item cost is not. X M D A. All right. X M D A. So barcode is sorted, and it is sorted from Z to A, and that's descending order. So what did we say now? Barcode. Barcode is so oh. barcode is sorted in the sending order. Switch you the sending order. Alright. Alright, moving on. Uh, nothing has been omitted. Huh, my favorite section. Alright, study the algorithm below and answer the questions that follow. I was hoping that we wouldn't have a delay so you guys could work these part with me and tell me which part of it you are having an issue with. Alright, so study the algorithm below, answer the questions that follow. All right, so we need to look for an assignment statement. Anyone with an equal sign will work. That's your assignment because we're taking a value and we're putting it into our next one. So here where you have total equal zero or um, total equal total plus one. Yeah, so those would be your assignment because here we're assigning zero. And then we take in total, which is 0 plus 1, which is 1. So that's your um, well, line number. So you could write line number 1, line number 8, or line number 9. Um, start of a loop. Start of a loop, line 2. That's where your while is. The while statement here is your loop. And you know we have two types of loops. We have bounded and unbounded iterations. Um, your bounded iteration means that we know how many times our program will loop. Hence, that's a for loop. Um, unbounded is your while, your repeat until. We don't know how many times the program will loop. We just know when the program should stop. Alright. Um, output statement. Um, prompt to enter name what else right so we have line 3 we have line 5 and line 11 so line 3 line 5 line 11 relational operator all right um do we have any that's line two that's your relational operator that's the only one there with a condition yeah so that's line two all right so complete the trace table using the algorithm on page 18. all right so what if the person enter english B. Let's complete the trace table. Right, let's go. Alright, total equal that. For total is less than or equal to 5. So yes, it meets that condition. Prompt to enter subject. So the student enter English B. If English B is entered already, so this is the first time, then prompt to enter another subject. So no. If not total equal 3, Total equals 3. 
then give 5% discount. Alright, so let's write that. So 5% discount would be given here. This part we have to write this part in. Alright, total would be equal to 3. Alright, so let's double check that. Alright, so if subject already exists, so it didn't exist. So we didn't have to prompt for another subject total equal three that's good discount equal give five percent discount good all right let's go back all right right here would work so total equal three three plus one now equals four Give five percent total equal right so we're going to repeat this one so when the user enter woodwork not now go on mommy i do something no i soon come to you go on pull up the door all right, all right leave it baby leave it All right. Um. So five percent discount. So hence now total is now at four. So this person is going to get discount also. C V. So woodwork would get five percent because it didn't exist before. So enter subject now, total equal 3, hold on, sorry, um, prompt to enter subject, that's this part, prompt to enter subject, so this person entered English B, if already exist, which it doesn't, then prompt to enter another one, finish that, okay, if total equal 3, total is not equal to 3, give 5% discount total equal total plus 1 so if that then do this otherwise oh so here so no oh so we blundered here because the person would have entered English B right here it says check if the system already entered but it wasn't entered already then prompt to enter another subject that finish should have had end if right here if total equal three so total is not equal to three then give five percent discount all right so that means that this discount right here is zero total is equal to one at the end of this let's go back now so total is equal to 1 right here so this total is now at 1 it says while well, total is less than so it is less than and the person entered woodwork so if the person entered woodwork woodwork wasn't entered before so we're not going to ask this total is not equal to 3 so we don't give a 5% discount which means that this discount is now zero but count is equal to two all right good all right so english b is entered now but english b was there before well, let me try the split screen. 
instead of having this uh, good right. give me time let me scroll down here so instead of going back and forth Yes, for the ComScience Unit 1 papers, I am trying to put them together in one document. And as soon as I put it together in one document, I want to send it off with the answers. So the exam is what, the 5th? So I'll send off the ComScience paper between now and Wednesday. Alright, Kid Unique. It's not a lot though. But you can probably get a uh, what? Uh, you probably get hundred and something questions. All right. What did they put in English? Ah, right here. Good. Took us a while, but we're now here. No, my birds are no longer giving me trouble, but the night owls or the night bugs are here. All right. I live in a tropical place as we all do all right um english b so english b was entered already so here prompt to enter um name of subject english b if subject already entered prompt to enter another subject right so it's going to come back up here so if english b is enter the same thing would happen here because it's not going to move on so that's c V no, oh, he said. Let me draw it back. So English B here would be zero. Cause then the system wouldn't move on any at all. Cause each time the person enter English B. It's going to check to see if it was entered already and once it was entered already then you're going to just continue looping that part and because this is an algorithm the program would be more dynamic with that part so that's zero and then total would still be at two hmm Is what's available to me right now so this one would be at two all right all right show in no problem all right mathematics no so if the person enter mathematics person enter mathematics count is still at two because then it would go back up there now for the person to enter that so mathematics would get all right if as i do that six you would give this one because there's a trick to this part so if that entered then that from that say so enter next subject if total equal three then give five percent discount so total is not equal to three so we come back to this part which is c and let me paste you here all right pasting not working so again we have zero percent discount because we are now approaching the three marker so that's zero percent and then now total would now be at three just
So that's three. All right, good. All right, all right. So give one suitable data type for the following variables. All right, so I can remove it off split, ah, split screen now. And then continue down, because this part doesn't have anything to do with this part. All right, one suitable data type for each of the following variables. So variables now that we use in Pascal. You have real, which is decimal numbers whether negative or positive you have whole numbers which negative or positive which would be declared as integer you have words which would be declared as string and then any single letter by itself would be character right so with that said what are the data types What are the data types that we would use? So students, we don't see any decimal point here. So this now would be integer. Oh, my battery is dying. Oh, let me scream for a charger. Adidra! 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 Charger, please! Charger. Come. Alright, come and video pause. What time am I going to do this one? What you did this? I'm going to do this one. That's get, nice. I'm going to get some beef and I'm going to have to clarify that. I'm going to get beaten for now. Why beat? Why am I get beaten for now? I'm going to come and stress and interrupt me. Like, I'm going to talk to my people. I'm going to get some of some water. Forget that. Anyways, come on. You know what I hear now then? I'm going to get beaten for now. Lucky door. I'm going to get beaten for now. I'm going to get beaten all right, sorry about that. I was screaming for a charger. All right, so this one is char. We know that char is for characters. You can't write in the word character. You have to write the... Because it's a data type, character. It's just that char represents character. So therefore, you'd have to write char. All right, this one now, because we're dividing by three... We don't know what the mark what mark would be. So we're just going to assume that mark would be a value that when we um, divide it gives a decimal value. So hence we have this as real. Here now we have um, grade one equal fifty six. Alright, so this one now is an array, but array is not a data type, it's a data structure. So, here, the data type would be integer, so this is an integer array. integer array all right here now we're going to identify the variable in part B that is not an element that is not an elementary data type all right so what do we understand by elementary data type
and my other source of checking comments just left me give me a minute All right, I'm trying to set up something where I can see the comments. I have to get a next device. Alright, so identify the variable in part B that's not an elementary data type. So that would be integer array because your elementary data type would be the basics. Alright, so that's that. That's your integer array. Um, well this year you for this year they got a lot of uh, alright let me split screen again so that we don't have to be going back and forth alright split okay so here we go all right so algorithm subject entry declare variables and constants discount equal that which is a constant there um total equal zero subject code equal okay and which means that it is open well all right so let's go so that subject entry complete hmm. using the algorithm and complete the following Pascal program by filling in the spaces oh so here we're declaring um, subject entry so what would we have at the front here once you're writing a Pascal program the first thing you must have is the word program So right here the name of the so program subject entry so here we have constant discount equal we don't put colon here you put the colon in the body for assignment but you don't put the the colon equal right here for constant so it would just be equal then var um so var is for variable c-o-n-s-t is for constant constants throughout the execution of the program their values don't change for var the values will change throughout the execution of the program all right so here now var total so total is equal to zero so we can declare total here as an integer Shark! 
Okay, the answer may come my computer. May I ask you for your computer? No. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Alright, so we're declaring subject code as char. Good. Alright, so begin. Total equal zero. What's missing at the end here? A semicolon. So each statement line must have a semicolon at the end. This is different for the ending of your if statements. Your if statements, your while statements with the condition. So subject code colon equal. So while total is less than or equal to 5 and subject code is not equal to x. I remember that we don't use the not with the cross. Equal sign with the cross through that in um, IT. So the less than equal, less than greater than sign is your not equal to. Alright, we have do right here. So that's do. Alright, so we have begin here. So let's look underneath. So it says prompt to enter one character code of subject. So you use your right line right here. So we have read line or if you use right <laughs> if you use root sorry if you use right it would have been correct just the same there is no rule which says you must use right or right line i think sometimes sexy i've seen questions which says that you don't want it to appear all together so this now is right ellen Alright, so what's the variable name now? So it says accept subject code. So right here, we're storing the subject, the code of the subject in the variable called subject code. Um, I don't have a device to view the comments. So if you're commenting, I can't see. I'm new to this YouTube live. And you try and write it back the same way it is written. So here now, you have subject. Oh, I think my caps up. All right, subject code. All right, subject code dash total equal three. Right here. Oh, so it's saying if total equal 3 so we put the if statement right here so here if total equal 3 then write which means that we are outputting 5% discount due if subject code is not equal to x then, alright, so let's check up here. If subject code is not equal to x, then add 1 to subject code. Then, hold on. If total equal that, then output that, which is that part. Then we reach here. So it says, um, add 1 to subject code else the total only oh, can stop the noise out there please thank you so total equal to tal plus 1 I was reasoning that out Totally. Yes.
Why you give me that for? When? So what kind of charge it I have now? You would have to sign in as you anyway. Pull up back your door. Alright. Else, right line total. End. And right here now, this is your end while. I think the program ended there after. Else. End while. Display total. There's a full stop here, which means that we're going to put end and full stop. Stoppings there, all right. So that would have been now your code. Let me let us view it. Um, remove split. You need to sign in. This one, I put it closer to all right. So that's that, that would have given you your 10 marks. All right, all right. So state the programming. Consider the programming code in the table. Following table example one, example two are different versions of the same instructions. All right, so accept ACC one zero zero. So the programming language generation used in example two. So this would be first generation, which is machine language, because we're seeing zeros and ones. So this would be first generation, which is machine language. All right, name. Oh, so meaning not know. Are doing something as soon come throw that way up, please lock the door mm -hmm. all right so I'm now able to see comments Everybody, are we on par with everything that's happening? Okay. All right. So it's asking now, write the generic name of the programming language illustrated in um, 2. All right. So 2 now is your second generation language.
Alright, um, are we all okay in the group? Alright, so example one. I was tending to this little girl. Alright, so example one is, is sometimes. Alright, so here we would have second generation, which is assembly language. Assembly language uses mnemonics. And then number two, which is what I wrote at the top. This now is machine language. All right. All right, answer the following questions based on the code written using example one acc num acc tech this and identify the error in the code acc means accept num means number acc accept so text so DISP would have been the error here. So there's nothing here to say. Sharik, may I record? Uh, everything I record. So the error is DISP. Correct the error by stating the code that should be used. So we realize now that for display, it is DIS. Alright, that's that part. think there's a delay all right state the technical term for each of the following so here now your original code is your source code that's the code that you're going to type up in your compiler um, so like in Pascal any code that you would type into the Pascal compiler that would have been your source code all right, locating errors, that is debugging. All right, so let me write those in. Because I think persons will be coming back to. I'm not sure if it's a part of something if you're going to be interested in listening per se. So programming code, um, that's your source code. This process is called debugging. Type of error found in C. Let's look on C. Alright, so this now would be a syntax error because there's no such code. Their syntax error. Alright, conversion conversion of code in example two. So this now would be your um your compiler. Yes. Mommy. Huh? Mommy. Mommy. 
Go in the room. Go in the room. Family issues. Alright, so here now conversion to the code in example two. Oh. Alright. So that now would be compiling. So it says write the code write the code in C using the instruction column in the table on page 22 all right all right I don't think I'm understanding this question so let me read it again all right rewrite the code in C Using the instruction column in the table on page 22. Alright, so I'm to rewrite the syntax here. Alright, so I'm to rewrite the code, which is this here, based on the table that was above. So the only error that we picked up. Alright, let me split the screen again. Why does it always go to the top? Alright, so right here. So here we're accepting num, accepting text, display num. Alright, so rewrite the code in C using the instruction column. On page 22 where's the instruction column oh all right here so see so accept this plain no man text so here let's insert my text box So accept number, accept text, display number. Alright, so let's double check. Alright, accept text number display. Alright, so that would have been the answer for there. Easy five marks as what's her name as Kareem said <laughs> all right the corrected code was executed write the output when the following data were entered So here we accept number which is 56 we accept text which is pass so display text so display number so in this case we would need to output pass we just need to write number and the number would have been 56 Yes, I was going to touch this one. Alright, here. The following one dimensional array was used to store. Oh, let me go back to uh, my one screen instead of the split view. Remove split screen.
All right, the following one dimensional array was used to store the number of subjects studied in a group of students. Subject, so we're looking on array. All right, so the data type for this is integer and the array size is 15. So the array can't hold more. Hold, yeah, hold more. It can hold less. It can hold less, but it can't hold more. So the size of the array is 15 and the data type of the array is integer. Data type always come after of. Alright. Alright, some of the content of the array are illustrated in the following table. Alright, so the bottom part, which is ordered, is always your index. And the part with, with the data being entered, that's your element. So even though the question only asks for you to identify where is your index, I'm just going to put both so here is your index your index is the numbered ordered part of your array right and the top part now is your element all right explain the meaning of the numbers in the shaded column all right so what it is saying here is that the number six which was entered by a user which was probably probably entered by a user um, is stored in location number nine and that's all it's saying there for the array so the value six is stored in location number nine and so let me add that text real quickly so the value Six is stored in location number nine. All right, and that's it, guys. All right, so tomorrow is your exam. I want you all to basically think about the questions. I don't think that the the paper is going to be a hard one. I think the structure may be different because next year the paper will be changing. We won't have so many sections in the paper anymore. Next year it is four compulsory questions, no programming. Don't know why. That paper won't be fun. Alright, um, Kalisa 2018 12B. Alright. I don't know if I can bring it up on the screen right now. Do I have 2018? I don't have 2018 on me. You want to tell me the question, um, Kalisa? Do I have 2018? I think I have 2016. Hold on. I think I have 2018. Let me check my phone. Check Kalisa. Hmm. I have January. Is it the January or is it the June paper for Kalisa? 2019. Alright, so I'm finding 2019 on my phone. 2017 multiple choice. 2017, 2017. I have January 2018. Hmm. Uh, let me see if I have it. This is a booklet. Okay, this is January 2017. That's the one I have on the screen now. 
That's a multiple choice. Multiple choice. Ah, uh, I think this is it. All right, 2018. Question 12. Let me see if I have. Question 12. Oh, that's the one with the... Yes, I found it. Alright, let me see if I can bring it up on the screen. Um, Alright, no. I wasn't supposed to bring that up. IT was papers. 2014. This one. Brandon, I like programming. I like programming very much, so probably <laughs> that is why I am saying that they shouldn't have removed the programming part. Programming is fun, you know, just think sometimes we just don't get enough time to probably teach it and baby it so that you guys can fully, fully, fully understand it. But I have students who would have moved on from Pascal moved into computer science and found C programming easier. I think it's just probably how it was introduced. Okay? Alright, so Kalisa, I think I'm pronouncing your name properly. Let me run through. You said question 12. I was saying PDF, I think should have I should have used PDF. Alright, Oxbow. Alright, no problem. Um go to the about that's Oxbow. Um go to the about section on my page and send me send me an email and then we will Go from there. So have a problem. Kalisa, is it just number twelve that you want to look at? Right, let me go to question twelve. I think oh that was the last one. Oh that's eleven. Oh, right here. Um, there's normally algorithms and this is for Brandy. This is, there's normally um algorithms and um Pascal code. But it's not as um difficult as the class activities that you would get because in class we are trying to give you like a complete thing for you to understand how the program will work but for exam purposes you just need to know how is it that you um accept your data what i tell my students um even though you in the algorithm you can use write output um print because we are transitioning into pascal we just use write straight so once it is that you do that you'll be fine um are you having difficulties with algorithm brandy oh in the area of trace tables all right um well, no problem trace tables are, are are the easier part though but no problem um all right Kalisa. So let's look at number 12 first and then you tell me what um what else you want me to look at all right so study the following outline of an office where the thick lines denote the wall and the numbers represent the blocks all right so right here anywhere you see the thick lines it's saying that you can't go through it's like it's a wall all right 
So here we're entering. Oh yes. So you're entering through here which is at 11. So it says using the terms using the term start down up left right and stop write the sequence of steps required to walk from block 11 right here to block 13 so you can't go from 11 to 12 straight because there's a thick wall right here so what you would write so we would write start first All right, which one of them something here no it's not this one well, let me read up is it reduct? Hold on, there's something which I can write with. More tools. Is it sign and fill? Who needs to fill and sign first? Others. Oh, come on. Alright, never mind. Alright, so I'll have to explain. Right, let me see if I can write it with this part. Right. So right here, your <laughs> your instruction would have been start start. Uh. All right. So after you come at eleven here, you would come down to twenty one and down to thirty one. So it would be start, comma, down, down. Alright, let me put a comma here. Down, down. Alright, so after you reach the 31, there's no thick wall right here. So then you would go across. So after down, down, then it is across, comma. Then you go up to 22 and then up to 12. So it means now that you're going to have up, up, comma, and then across to 13. Oh, what it was left. Alright, what is this now? That's my right. So where I have across, this should have been right. Sorry. So it is start, which is at 11, down, down right up up right i don't know left from right so i was thinking about that <laughs> right all right so that would have been that part here image of hazy all right so that's that part No, I was using something the other day. Alright, next part of the question. Alright, using the following algorithm. Write a complete Pascal program name, Maze. Alright. Alright, so I am going to need to find whatever it is that I used the other day. And I just can't figure out where it is. Let me see, can I copy this? Alright, good. Copy image and yeah. Alright, good. <laughs> I think it's better for me in Microsoft Word. Alright, so using the following algorithm, write a complete Pascal program named Maze. Alright guys, so the first thing you must have is the word program. So your program, let me increase the font size, program followed by your program name and the name of the program is Maze. M A Z E, yeah. Semicolon. 
then you look for all the variables that what's your website URL my website or my YouTube are you talking about my YouTube um ask Bo all right all right so here now we look for we don't have anything that's a constant so you look for all your variable names and then you declare them as such <coughs> so you have step and because it is equal to zero we automatically take that to be integer um, turn is also one so we write we declare turn also as a variable at wall equal false while exit is not equal to true step we already declare step if at wall equal true then turn equal turn plus one else step equal step plus one if at exit equal true where is at exit if at exit is equal true uh, at wall which means that those now are accepting text so we're going to have at wall comma and at exit colon and these are string good all right so at wall at exit so let's go now so we have step turn at wall which is false while that at exit is not equal to true so that means that that is accepting text step we have that already at wall already turn already step at exit then output steps all right moving on so then we use begin to show the starting part of our body your program has three parts your program name your declaration your body program here that's your program name var and right up to this point that's your variable and your declaration we don't have any constant so let's initialize our variables so step colon equals zero and turn and we use colon equal for assignment and that's that part all right so we cover that one at wall equal false so let's go with that one so at wall colon equal single quotation false yes i can um queue in what you can do is that as i was saying before if you want the papers and some multiple choice papers that i have just um drop your email address and i'll send it to you all right so at wall equal false all right good so that's that part so let's do our while you don't need to note any of those because this program code is not going to accept it so while what do you say at exit so well at exit oh, at exit is one word at exit is not equal to not equal to what no true so that's T R U E do and because we have multiple things to carry out you must have your begin right all right so what do we do within this now step equals step plus one so we're incrementing step step colon equal step plus one semicolon um This could you send the 2017 to 2019 past papers, please? No problem. 
have the papers already miss do you have the answer sheets for which one um Kaliso? I think that is something I probably need to work on all right step equals step plus one all right come down to this part so if if at all equal true so if at wall is equal to true then do we have multiple things to carry in this if turn else if end if at exit equal true then output all right so here now we're going to have begin i'll probably send it down on one page and split the screen for 2017 and 2018 what do i have i think i have four let me tell you 2017 yes which one of 2017 is it though? Um, 2017, June 2017, I have Kaliso. 2018, I'd have to finish the paper and probably send it to you. And then Nick, for 2018, paper two, then I'd have to do that. Do we have to write the full program on the exam? Um, not a lot of questions, not in all cases. Um, they ask you to write the full program they probably just ask you how you would declare based on what i've seen like there's no specific thing to say all right then they're not going to ask you and they will ask you all right so Kali say you can get the 2017 solution the june and I work out the 2018 in its entirety and send to you and the others. So let me get your email addresses. Alright, let me go back here. Alright, so at wall. Alright, so if at all equal true, then begin. So then we increase. So turn colon equal turn plus one. Then um, what else? Else. And if um or oh, this is else else begin what's this now step equals step Yes, step equals step plus one. No, no problem, um, Giselle. I can send you the paper. May we track your response? Do you still want it? <laughs> um. All right. So then, now we end this part. So that's the end for your if statement then there's a next if so if at exit equal true what should happen no then we have then here so we need to output the right line open bracket that number of steps number of turn 
and so steps what do we have step mm -hmm. comma turn all right so that's it what we need to output then you have end and semicolon for your end while and then end and full stop for the end of your program all right so let me show you how that is remove the split probably too fine all right so that would have been it on the first part of 2019 all right this is what year do I have the 2019 did I download the 2019 out of my inbox well now let me check Question five and six also. Alright, let me go back to this one. the first part of 2019 and I'm going to play the 2019 all right all right Gerard is playing an online game where the users need to move the star over different targets in order to gain points use the game in example to answer the following two examples of input that can be used to move the star to the target all right so your mouse joystick and your keyboard can be used hold for me yes yes hi Anelia. um the the paper is standard and i think the only thing that is prob probably will change is the what um the productivity tools anila because it's standard i don't know which book um you guys would use but i know that for the oxford the oxford information technology book like you can for section a it's the fundamentals of hardware and software which is unit one then unit four and unit five so you're looking on the applications and implications of ICT and also information processing and then you have a productivity tool and then you have problem solving um, I thinking that they would yeah joystick would work to, to move it right um, I think in terms of how the questions will be structured it will be probably a little bit different um all right one output device and one hardware interface that notifies the user that the star is over the target so output device that could be used like music for two monitor yes the monitor could notify you that's good follow um also like a sound too because sometimes when you're playing a game and you move when you meet your target then it gives off a sound no the monitor would show it says an output device and one hardware interface that notifies the user that the star is over the target mm. monitor would it notify you yeah the monitor would work um nick oh speaker yes <laughs> yes Kelly said the speaker would work 
what about a touch screen for the input device that could be used yes yes Paul the, um, the input device well she was talking for part A full of and the joystick yes the joystick would work no problem oh the Cambridge book that's a green one um that's a green one Anita I uh, think it is green and we have some hints of blue in there. Alright. Um, so yes. So that would be that part there. Alright. The hardware interface that notifies the user. Um, Alright. So hardware interface takes in audio um any image that would come up on the screen so both would go hand in hand there i don't know that one i don't know that one at all cambridge i'd have to probably look into it all right so all right so again now so we covered the output device the hardware interface that notifies the user that the star is over there so the sound would come in there or any celebratory thing that comes up all right describe two ways in which the gaming application can indicate to Gerard that the star is over the target all right so the gaming application as i was saying now the the cele hold for me Yes. Daddy, can I daddy come in? Daddy not need to walk around Amelia. Daddy. Um so so now that the star is over the target you'll get like a sound like a clapping um thing to say that you have met the target or you'd get um a sound like a hooray um a some form of explosion on the screen. Or a message saying that you know the star is over the target there all right complete each of the following statements by writing in the most suitable expression associated with the terms in the bracket Gerard is playing a game is play is able to play the game interactively using users with other users in with users in different countries real time so for i it would be real time or online any one of those processing mode would work um he's able to talk to he's able to talk with other users over the internet while playing the game using the VOIP voice over internet protocol um, since he has so many games on the computer he should dash his files to safeguard them he should back up his files to safeguard them in the event his computer and data are corrupted data security yes. sometimes he can play his game using dash where he is able to use cables to connect to the internet oh sometimes he's able to he can play his games using wireless fidelity where he does not use cables to connect to the internet um yes or Q, that's for QN. yes call it a wi-fi um QN, what you can do you can go to the about section and then send me a message and then i will just attach it and send you there um processing mode applications and implications of ict um nick that is batch we're looking on batch online real-time processing mode um yeah those so that that would that is where you would find that part. Alright, good. Right. 
probably hearing my family making some noise in the background. No problem, Nick. Alright, so that's this part. Alright, online banking website shows the following screen to transfer money from one account to another. Complete the table. Alright, complete the table you below by stating the fields for which the following validation checks can be used. I remember I was saying before. Um no. I think I can run through the ones that I have and probably send you the solution for that. Um Y2J17 <laughs> won't be an issue. Um, you'd probably after I finish this live, um, give and take two hours thereafter, then I can send it to you. Um, complete the table below by stating. All right, so here now we have data type check. All right, so data type check can work for amount just to ensure that they don't enter anything else. Um, yeah, and date and time also. Reason. For amount is so that the person doesn't enter anything other than what you would want them to enter there. Um, consistency check. Alright, so the consistency check would work with amount and the daily limit of the day. To ensure that the two... They are consistent in terms of the person doesn't go over the limit. So the field would be amount. What else could I work for consistency? Um, the to and the from. What if the person enter the same account? Number there. That would work too. And date and time also for consistency. Um, rain check. Rain check could also work now for date. Rain check could also use for amount. Or oh, the data type. For which one? Um, Joseph. All right. Oh, for data type. Oh, data type check amount. I was saying um, you could use um amount for data type to ensure that the person doesn't type in words where you want numbers. Cause that is the purpose of the data type. It's basically to restrict um persons from entering values that you don't necessarily want them to enter. Okay. Alright, so I customized transferring $2,500 from one account to another on Thursday. Okay. On Thursday, January 4th, 2018. After clicking the next button, an error message is shown. One factor that could have led to an error caused by the customer. <laughs> Alright. Um so the person um transferred two thousand five hundred from one account to the next. Um the person selected Thursday. Alright, so based on how they entered this date, the fourth of the first twenty eighteen. That would have been so the date format could have been the issue there because the date should have been month which is first then the fourth then 2018 so that's one there um what about data type Amelia? um 
two factors that could have led to an error caused by technology um transmission transmission could have been the error or the the strength of your wi-fi or whatever it is that they're using to transfer at that point so that could have been an error message there that could cause so you have one the transmission probably there was a loss in a power surge so it could have been that the it could have been that the the there was a dip in terms of the electricity there could have been also faulty connections um there for b right so that would have covered five and six for that part Let's see what's happening here. Alright, so Akia regularly needs to access his documents that are sent to her. She uses one or more applications to receive and send notes and information to her colleagues. Sometimes she needs to... Kaliso? the wrong character the wrong character for which part in terms of the account number Anila right all right um right all right so hold on let me check something guys On this paper, right, let me see. It. Uh, I won't, but I'd have to copy the information to answer the flow chart. One. So Aaron is playing a new game online. Playing a new game online. He gains distance, he loans points in the game as follows. Alright, good. Alright, so increase speed, he gains 20 points. Gains distance. So gains distance here on another vehicle and gain 10 points. Alright, so you would have 10 points here. So here would be 10. Hmm. Let me try and see something here. All right, so this is not allowing me to write, and I need to write in the document. Not sure what oh see it here. No. <laughs> I thought that was it. Ten zero zero thirty twenty. Alright, let's check that with um Kali Sadden. 
all right so gains distance all right gains distance 10 points correct knock aside walk and get stopped all right knock for no change in points however the car can do the following can turn in opposite direction and knock a sidewalk so knock a sidewalk and get stopped so knock a sidewalk would not remove any of his points but get stopped he loses 10 points so that's zero all right correct gain distance on another vehicle so he gains distance so he got 10 points but then he got stopped so he lost the mark so that is 10 0 0 10 0 10 0 0 all right call it so good turns and crashes so turn would keep that crashes lose all points zero again great um what else gains distance in speed gains distance which is 10 and increase speed 20 so that's 30 great all right is stopped so stopped you lose 10 so it's down to 20 knock a sidewalk so that's 20. all right yes good all right using pseudocode write an if statement to move for move equal if statement for move one gain distance in a that updates the number of points all right so i'll have to use comments for this part so you'd write if and it's a pseudocode all right so if let me check gains distance so if move equal gains distance gains distance then updated updated points equal updated of dp plus one what is in a that updates the number of points four marks all right and that would have been that and end if if play against distance then points equal points plus 10 yes Carissa good girl good girl all right similar there all right good next part what are the flowchart symbols? Because we come into the flowchart. What are the flowchart symbols? Alright. Um, ready. State the programming language generation used in translation one. Translation one is assembly. Second time we see this the two papers. So that's your assembly language, also known as oh. So here you would write second generation language. That's for A. Um generic name. Wait, was it? Who was it again? I think it was Kate. What her her name? I don't remember what it was. I think she said that. Uh, her name again. Who she said here? It's a K. As I was saying. Uh, oh, let me see if I find. Ah. Uh, Kareem. Kareem, you realize that this question is here again? Assembly language, yes. What year is this? Um, This year, this is 2018, June. Right. So, translation 1 is assembly. Translation 2 is what? And machine language. Good, Kaliso. 
All right, so identify the error in the following instructions. Let me zoom out a little bit. See if we can see everything. All right. What's the error? All right, do we have SZE? That's yes. We have TAP. Good. What's the error? Yes, that was on the 2017 QN. Can probably send it. All right, Anelia, enjoy. If you don't find me here when you come back, um, you can just send me an email address so I can send you the information. Yes, JNP, very good page. I got Charnet and Brandon. Very good. All right. And QN, good. All right. So it says state the technical term for the type of error identified in C. Realize that it's the same question. Them just use different um different terms here. Alright, so the technical term that would be used for C, good, yes, that's a syntax error, shine it, good. Alright, correct the error by stating what the instruction should be, good. Alright, yes, Brandon, yes, Kaliso. Alright, what should the instruction be? So the instruction should have had um, S Z E T A P. <laughs> yes, you can imagine if you go into the exam tomorrow, Brandon, and see something like this. Yes, yes, Keith. Syntax, very good. <laughs> All right. Um, state the technical. Te oh, correct the error. So the correct arrow, right? So where we have JNP, we should have JMP. All right, good. All right, state the technical term for locating this type of arrow in a program. Okay. How do we identify this arrow now? What's the technical term? Yes, debugging. Um, what did it say? For locating this type of error. No, it wouldn't be compiling um, Sharnet. Because compiling is basically where we take the source code. We're taking... Um, or human language and we're turning it into machine language for compiling there so compiling wouldn't work for this one for good try all right not the type of error but how is it that you would locate the error fuller so it's debugging Uh, this one is also that was there before too guys look at this one all right the general name given to the original set of code before translation. Yay, 
Yes, so it's good. Yes, we are done with the repeating. <laughs> All right, good, shine it. So it's good. All right. The term given to the translation that produces the output of the program. Yes, Kalisa. Good. Yes, Brandon. So it's good. We're on a roll. Alright. The term given to the translation that produced the output of the program. The compiler, yes. Alright, good. Compiler. Alright, next part. Name a programming language that's user friendly. That has user friendly programming instructions. Is that a giveaway question? This would be Pascal, which would be considered as fourth generation language, so it's user friendly. No, third. Pascal would be third. Right. Right, sharing it. Our C could work too. C plus plus is difficult. Ish, not fully, but ish. Right, Kalisa. All right. Next part of the question. Alright, so state whether each of the following operation is described as input, processing, output, or storage. Real time. Real time. For which one, Brandon? Oh, alright. <laughs> alright, state whether each of the following input, um, output processing entering the player's name in a competition all right so you're saying input output processing output all right no problem brandon all right so entering input showing the number to the screen output processing exit output all right input for the first one last one is storage Exiting, oh, saving, okay, yeah, all right, so, input for Tyrese, yes, Brandon, input, 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 yes, input, output, processing, output, yes, input, yes, yes, guys, math ABC, yes, and Nima, input, output, processing, output, storage. Right. Very good. Storage for the last one, right? Q in. Alright. So for this one I probably have to switch over to um word so that we can do this part how is exiting output <laughs>
exiting a game would yield a output all right hold on exiting processing abc what do you think it is then which will give you an output screen yes no no that is the same rationale i was coming with i want to hear what abc is saying because it could look on the whole fact that you're giving the, the computer an instruction to do which would classify it as a processing that's what i want to see if that's the line that um math was coming off why is it okay and give her some time or him all right so let's go to the flow chart until all right so here Get a flow chart for the following control structure. So because it's a for the following control structure, we're not going to look on the um, start and stop. All right. So once you see while for repeat until if we use diamond, that's your selection. That's your decision, sorry. Right, diamond. And once it is that you use a diamond, you must show the true and false part of it. Alright, so let's add text so we write but basically you can write it in the form of a question or you can write it just as is. So well let me increase that well points is less than or equal to 20 All right so that's the first part guys let me know the flowchart symbols that you know and their purpose while we do this part all right then we're going to have our arrow from each side all right so math is saying i would say input as you would have to enter the keys or a special character to exit. The question would have had to be structured um, differently um, for you to get that part. Um, Alright, rhombus. That's the least square part of the graph. <laughs> yeah, that's input or open. <laughs> All right. Yes, start is an oval, Brandon. Start and stop. For um is oval. Good. Circle four connectors, yes, small circle. Right. Good. Alright, so here now we have that part. So it's a well points. <sighs> These kids are playing.
All right, so this part is true. And this part is false. And you have to label it. True or false, yes or no, whichever one. Alright, so that's that part. True, false. Alright, so if that is true, what should happen? We want this part here, level equal level plus one, and that's processing. And that we use a rectangle for. Any form of calculation that you see. So level equal level plus one. All right. Then it says you need more. You need twenty or more points. So it says if right. So that's the false part. Six, you didn't write this part properly, you know. All right. So while points is greater than or equal to twenty, you increase the level of the game. So level equal level plus one. So if you are level two, you have the points. So you go on to level one. Oval for Terminator. Yes, sharing it. Good. Um. Right. Then now, if you don't have the points, then you need an output. So that's where my lean square comes in. My parallelogram. Alright, so here we're going to output. You need 20 or more points. Alright, increase this. Alright, good. You need 20 or more points. Alright. And then from this part, you're going to have your stop. This part is a given. All right, so stop. Stop. Good. Then now you want to show that the program is supposed to loop. So each time, because the person has 20 points and is moving on, the person is supposed to continue trending upwards. So you send back the arrow each time to check if the person is losing or gaining points and if the person is gaining points then right there so each time you level up you're supposed to see really Shannon You see, because the the well is a decision, so you you can go left or right with it. So you wouldn't include it in the rectangle. So the the while itself would have to be in a decision box. And again, you can reason it out. And um, why do you connect the decision to the false side? Alright, so from the decision itself, right, Brandon, and sharing it, 
there is a um you can either go to true or false so right here on the screen you're seeing where you go to the right that's your true part right good so this is not what you say if you have a four um the four will go back to the top if you have a if then you can connect but in this case it wouldn't use a connector in at all because it's two different things let's look on the program itself let's say you are at the game and you're playing now your point is equal to 19 right so if your point is equal to 19 you're going to go to the left which is the false part of the program and then you're telling the system now at this point because the person has 19 points they should all put you need 20 or more points and then the program will stop so it's not like this is the the condition which makes the program loop the program loop if you have 20 or more points so if you have let's say you now 20 points you go to the tree true section which increases your level so if you're at level 3 you now go to level um 4 because level equal level plus one so hence now once you go to that level and you care whatever operation you're doing in the game you should go back to the top part to check so let's say you lost a point then you can't level up because you don't have the 20 points but if you gain points because the condition is greater than or equal to 20 then you continue to train upwards in the game hope that was um better in terms of the explanation let me know alright um where was I now alright good so we draw that part and we did question 12 already question 4b Yes, Kali, so. Alright, let me check question 4B. Four. One, two, three. Four. Four B. Four B, four B, four B. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this one. Alright, so for this one, no, it's a shading. It's like 2 to the power of the zeros and we're increasing. Alright, so Daniel wants to represent 12, 35, 47 seconds <laughs> using a clock. Where each column shows the binary coded decimal number. In each of the three shaded columns. Alright, so here now, we're showing the time. So if you notice, look to this side. We look to this side and we shade the numbers that will be equal to the number below here. So 1, that's why we shade 1 here. Okay. You would shade 2 right here for this one. For 3, 2 plus 1 gives 3. Hence, 3 shaded here. For 5, you would shade 4 and 1 because that is equal to 5. And then 7, you would shade 3, sorry, 4, 3, and 1 because 4 plus 2, 3. 4 plus 2, 6. 6 plus 1, 7. <laughs> so, that is the shaded part there. So, go again. For 2, you look to the right here, the left, and you shade the numbers that would give you a combination of this number here. So 2, this is 2, so you shade 2 here, 5, 4 plus 1 gives you 5, so you shade those 2, and 7, 4, 3, and 1, 4, 2, and 1, because that would give you 7.
Okay, so that would be that. I'm going to put up some images on the screen and you leave them there and you play it back and you look on the images. Oh, this is not going to help any at all. So I have to um send these to you guys. Alright, so that's it for our live session today. Good luck on your exams. Please leave your email addresses so that I can send you the papers. No problem, Kalisa. Um, please do paper one. Um, in the chat, or you can send me a direct message, um, Nick, and then I send them to you. Um, Ram, Ramid. Um, oh, right. Okay, Richie. I'm um, a paper one. I don't know if I'll be able to come back on later on. So if I do come back on later on, then I can do it. Otherwise, just drop your email address and then I'll send it to you. Yes, I'll save the live. I'll save it and I'll post it so that you can use it. Oh. The about on my page. Um, if you go on the about, what you're supposed to see is, um, let me see, what is there now? Mm. You're supposed to see, um, on the about section up below, you're supposed to see send email. Um, you're welcome, Brandon. Send email and January 2019. Yes. Just drop your email and I'll say what I'll do. I'll just send you the papers that I have. But who, what was I saying? Oh, Nick. I was saying when you go on the page, um, you should go to about, scroll down, it says emails. I'm not sure what exactly it's And then it's going to ask you to put in this capture. And then you'll see the email address coming up. And then you copy it and send me the link. Otherwise, Sandra, you can just leave your email address here. And then if you don't want anybody to see it thereafter, I can remove it for you. So just leave your email addresses. You're welcome, guys. Thank you very much for your support. I appreciate it a lot. I really do hope that this um, session will help you tomorrow. And all the best. Thank you. I'm trying to get some rest. <laughs> get some rest and study. Get some rest and study. Right. Thank you again. Alright. So, um, where's Carissa? Shine it. Um, remember to leave the email. Brandon, Nick. Alright. Good night.